The other day I was running a few projects on my laser engraver and I spent a lot of time waiting. So I did some things that I do when I get bored. And then when I got bored of being bored, I went on TikTok. <laughs> I can't believe someone would say that. That is horrible advice. Once again, some of the worst leather craft advice I'd ever heard from an expert. <laughs> People have lost their mind. I cannot let this go on any longer. So the Big Stacks family is getting another video about bad advice on leathercraft from around the interwebs. TikTok edition. <laughs> oh, I need to catch my breath. Oh, I need to catch my breath. Welcome to Big Stacks Small Workshop. Just like last time, there was good and there was bad advice. I'm gonna give you the advice I heard. I'm gonna let you guess if I think it's good or bad. If you're tired of hand stitching, you could use a sewing machine. All you have to do is replace your standard needles with specialized needles designed for leather. Sounds legitimate. You're replacing the needles in your sewing machine with specially designed needles just for leather. That is bad advice. Let me give you an example that's similar. You could take your average car and put a trailer hitch on it. And you could hook a trailer up to it, towing about 3,000 pounds. You'll probably be able to pull it for a while. But you won't get very far. Your engine might seize up. You're going to burn out your transmission. The same thing happens with your sewing machine. The motor is not designed to go through leather. Your standard sewing machine does a great job of going through fabric. But when it's going through the thicker material of leather, it is a lot of wear on your sewing machine engine. You're going to burn out that motor in no time. You can use a beefier vehicle to tow your trailer. Something that's designed for heavy duty use. You can also use an industrial size sewing machine, which is designed for hard work. You put your special leather needles in there and you should be fine for the most part. Or you can get this hand crank machine that everyone's talking about from Amazon. It's probably okay. It will do the work, but it's really for a hobby. It's not really designed for production. Two pair. A pair and they're good. Wait on purchasing a tool until you have a project that needs it. I actually think this is pretty good advice. This is a stitching groover. I haven't done any projects on the Big Stacks channel that require stitching. So we really haven't had a need for a stitching groover. In the future, I am going to do some stitching projects. And sometimes I'm going to recommend using a stitching groover. It's not something that you really need right away. You purchase an inexpensive one on Amazon for, I don't know, 10, 15 bucks. But until you need it, there's really no need to spend the money. Tools can sometimes have multiple purposes. Try coloring outside the lines in your head for a little bit and think of other ways you can use the tools you already have. For instance, I use a woodworking disc sander to even curves and also to get a nice smooth edge when I stitch two pieces together. I also have a special burnisher that I made that I can put in my wood lathe to finish the edges of my projects. <laughs> Do me a favor. If you're enjoying this video, hit that like button so YouTube can share it with more makers just like you. If you want to get into leather craft, go ahead and buy one of the Amazon leather starter kits. is it horrible advice but just like anytime you buy a starter kit there are a ton of things you'll never use like this thing the heck is that hey psst, come here it's for transferring patterns 
onto leather using carbon paper. At least that's what I think it is. These kits are going to give you a lot of things that you already have. For instance, you need to cut leather, right? So you can use this special leather cutting knife from one of those kits. Or you can use this special leather cutting knife. And they are beginner tools. If you do end up using them, you'll probably end up replacing them once you get further along in your journey. So you could really just use what you have and then save up. And later on, when you want to get a nice tool, you can get a really nice tool. Mm. 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 This thing is warped. Mm. Why do I always get a warped one? Mm. You can use a couple of socks or make a leather pouch and fill it up with BBs and rest it on your workpiece as you're tooling. I actually think this is a pretty good idea. I haven't done it yet. This is a, uh, a cornhole bag, but I'm really considering this idea. See, when you're tooling your leather, there's a chance it can move around and you need it to stay really still. If you set your BB bag on top of your workpiece, not only is it gonna weight it down, you could probably also rest your wrist or your arm on it while you're doing tooling so you can get a nice steady hand when you're doing your work. Down and dirty. I got six cards. Use a scratch awl to make stitching holes. <laughs> I'm afraid that is bad advice. Just to be clear, we're talking about a scratch awl. No pricking irons, punches, or chisels. Awls are great for transferring images onto leather. And you can use them to open up existing stitching holes just a little bit more if you're having trouble getting your needles to pass through. You really can use an awl to poke holes. This can be done. It'll work, but it's not going to look pretty. Because with an awl, what you're doing is you're not cutting the leather. You're forcing it. You're forcing your way in, pushing it wide open. So it's going to look a little sloppy. I really suggest using punches, chisels, or pricking irons to do your stitch holes. It's going to look a lot cleaner and that's what they're designed to do. A great way to avoid frustration is to avoid using awls to make your stitching holes. Oh, this is a long one. Ah. Seek an apprenticeship. I'm afraid this is not really the best idea if you want to get started in leather craft. Hello, Mr. Professional Master Leather Crafter. Yes, um, I'm thinking that I want to try leather craft. And I was told to ask you if you would take me on as an apprentice. Wah, wah, wah. You know, an apprenticeship. I'm probably going to give you a lot of my time. Probably not get paid a lot of money. Wah, 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 wah. Wait a second. I don't even know if Leathercraft is something really for me right now. I really don't think an apprenticeship is the best way if you're just getting started with Leathercraft. The best thing to do if you have an interest in Leathercraft and you want to see if it's something that you like or maybe you don't like is to get some basic tools, maybe some that you already have, and watch a few YouTube videos. And if you progress and you like the way things are going, then what I would suggest is not to get an apprenticeship, maybe to find a mentor, someone that's done this for a hobby for many, many years, or you can even reach out to a professional that's doing this and ask them if maybe they can give you some tips or advice or answer questions for you. What I would not do is drop everything in my life and start an apprenticeship. That, that is very time consuming and you don't even know if it's something you like yet. came off. Oh, oh well. Use olive oil to condition your leather. I'm afraid I'm gonna have to say nay to this one.
Ah, uh, olive oil. The old miracle solution used for healthy cooking, skin care, hair care products. And I've heard if you mix it with iodine and you stick your baby's thumb in there, one day you might avoid having to pay the orthodontist for screwed up teeth. Kind of made that one up. Olive oil obviously is made from olives and olives come from an olive tree. Um, good job there, Captain Science. Tell me something I don't know. All right, I'm not going to tell you something you don't know, but I'm going to tell you something you should know and you should probably think about. When fruit off of a tree sits out, it goes rotten. So as soon as you open this up, it's exposed to air. What's going to happen in a few months? It'll be rancid. It might be okay. Might be. I do have members of the Big Stacks family that said that they have never had any issues with olive oil. Now, I think it isn't the worst thing in the world, but there is a better solution. Why don't you use something that's designed for leather? Basically, all that needs foot oil is, is they take the ankles of the cows and uh, kind of boil it down. I don't know. There's a process, and it's they get the fat and produce this oil. I want you to think about something for a moment. When you are conditioning something that came from a cow, like leather, should you use something that came from a tree? Or maybe you should use something that came from a cow, like neat's foot oil. If you have some leather working advice I didn't mention, I'd love to hear about it. Do me a favor, drop me a note in the comments below. Remember, Big Stacks grows, Big Stacks builds, and Big Stacks makes. If you want to see the original list of worst leather crafting advice, you can click up here or just below it. I'm going to put my most recent video about the laser engraver that's severely underpowered. And I'll see you next time at Big Stacks Small Workshop.